at one point there was a group like MJ12, maybe a group like it, if not that group. MJ12. I don't think I'm familiar with that. So the uh, the the story is is that back in the 40s, Eisenhower put together a group, and they called it Majestic 12. And the name of these the names of these people are are you know they're historically documented, and they're supposedly these papers that came out describing that they were tasked with taking the whole UFO thing and managing the information <laughs> and sequestering it away and making managing. sure it, managing managing which involved burying it yeah. to the point where nobody was accountable so they created this whole organization now people will debate the existence of MJ12 it's it, it's a hotly debated subject the papers that came out are people still to this day debate their authenticity but it makes sense that if you're the government in the 40s and 50s and you've got evidence of something that you don't understand that's crashed, you're going to put together at the highest level a group of scientists and, and military people to, and, and intelligence people to look at this and manage it and decide how to disperse it to the public, if at all. So if there wasn't an MJ-12, a simple thought experiment would lead you to the point where there must have been somebody. Because you don't have a, a, a craft of unknown origins crash in the desert and then you just don't look into it. Yeah, and it has to be like my thought, I think, is in line with most people's thoughts. Like it has to be something like an amalgamation. It has to be something separate. It's not like, oh, the CIA is on this or like, oh, the NSA is on this. Like there has to – I'm not saying that there aren't people in those organizations who are like read in and a part of it. In fact, mm -hmm. I'll bet that literally is the case. That's, that's pretty much right? describing what I've been able to find out. Right? So it has to be some sort of like group of individuals that are – decide to be that are clear to be read in on this and work in tandem together secretly and you know covering up secrets like this that's something that's really hard for me to concept because well here's I what here's i can't what imagine happened. having that information so you got roswell the roswell daily record spills the story general ramey of yes. or flying saucer then the next day oh it was a weather balloon Okay, there was there was a group that was responsible for that about face, and and was and was responsible for that whole story changing and being buried and all whatever was found at Roswell, whether it was alien or whatever, we never saw it. The weather balloon is pretty much debunked completely. So, an organization formed to do that. The first thing they they decided was that well we can't go public with this, mm. so we've got to keep it a secret. So now these guys have free reign in the early days of government to do whatever they're accountable to nobody except the president and their job is figure out what to do with this information figure out what to do with the stuff we've recovered and their decision was we can't tell the public for any number of reasons and now we got to look into this technology and so it didn't go to the front-facing military it didn't go to the the halls of congress although a lot of people say some of it ended up in the <laughs> yeah, basement yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. it went into top secret rooms where they had conversations about you know hey we found this can you look into what that might be you know and it could be everything from an intact craft to a piece of technology to a piece of metal to a piece of materials um any of those things so over time with zero accountability lots of black budget money and compartmentalization where very few people knew the whole picture so you could be a colonel say let, let's say somebody's sitting on top of this whole thing okay. and they know the entire story they're the ones that put this group together how many of those people are there not many no three or four you're you're called into these guys office and you're handed a piece of of something and you're told to take it to Lockheed Martin. So you take it to Lockheed Martin. Now, how many people in that chain know anything about where this stuff came from that, that, that is provable? Nobody. Now, you fast forward 50 years when these guys are all gone, and all that remains is the remnants of these programs and legends about where this stuff came from. Mm. That, is there some kind of repository where all these records are kept? Maybe, but who knows where it is? See, I don't know where the line gets drawn. That's the other problem here. Like, where is it – where where do, do these individuals, whoever they are, figure out that, hey, anything at any point even in the future, like let's say they're saying even 300 years from now or something like that, anything past this line we can never talk about. What makes them decide that? To me, this is just where my head goes, not to go like too far with it, but – it means they're here and they've been here 
And it's the kind of thing where if we actually had the information shared with the public, people would riot in the streets or kill themselves or whatever they're going to do because it's it's it means it's like the end times are here. That's the only thing I can come up with that makes sense. And then when you start to think that, you're like, well, am I a crazy person too? I, I don't think so, but other people could say that, you know? Well, the idea that, that there's been some kind of presence of a non-human or even alternative human uh, species here on the planet that we don't know about, that's, that's pretty much not hard to dismiss, that they've been here through all of recorded history. In Accidental Truth, we have a, a guy that has come forward in the film for the first time ever admitting that he was running 30 and 40 years ago a secret government program studying this stuff. Who was this guy? Alexander in, in the film. Mm -hmm. And and he talks about how that these things have been with us for all of recorded history and that flying saucers are absolutely real and that our sensors picked them up from time to time up to a mile wide, he said that he's seen. I think I had him mixed up. Who was the guy who was, because you and I talked about this last night, who was the guy who was basically just a middleman, though? Like well, I think that I think that was Alexander. I think that there was a in in the time when, when he came in, and Colonel John Alexander, for people who don't know, he's a... He was involved in a lot of esoteric government programs. They studied life after death. They studied non-lethal weapons technology, mind control. He was supposedly involved in um, the what was that program that they did where they were doing mind control experiments on people? MK Ultra. Yeah, he was involved in MK Ultra. He was the guy. He was like the subject of Men Who Stare at Goats. Yeah, they the made movie. that movie, and yeah. he was the Kevin Spacey's character. Supposedly, was after him, uh, and he was also. Uh, fictionalized in a book called out there by by a new york times writer um but at any rate alexander's military record what we do know and and can prove this guy was ultimately the, the if there was ever a guy that could uh, tell you but he'd have to kill you it might have been john mm. and for years he would say that you know there's no government program studying ufos in, in recent time he's come out and said well that's not exactly true there was and i was actually running one of them and we've been able to find this evidence but he will tell you and he does in the movie maybe for the first time ever that we've been studying these things for a long time and the stuff that that lou elizondo's group found and he he says this too in the film they were they were studying craft doing the exact same thing 30 40 years ago and it's the same group that has surfaced through uh ttsa the how put offs, the, uh, the the people like that that came up through Tom DeLong's organization in 2017. These are the same guys that have been involved in these programs going all the way back 30, 40 years. What's that called? To the Stars? To the Stars Academy of yeah. Arts and Sciences. Okay. But um, back to the original question as, as to how this stuff could get sequestered. After a while, nobody knows the whole story. The, di the classified documents have, have been either filed away where nobody knows where they're at or destroyed the the reason that the information is not getting out if you give something say a, a, just a military officer went to lockheed martin with some material that, that is, is non-earthly or of unknown origin and said you know see what this is what you can do with it <laughs> well lockheed goes oh wow you know this stuff causes if you bend it just right you can have invisibility or or if you do this with it you can defy radar or, you know, look at this stuff. You can crinkle it up and it folds back out to its original shape. Let's figure that out. Well, now all of a sudden you've got something that a corporation is in possession of that becomes a trade secret that they are not going to share with anybody. And so there's a lot of reason to That's believe a that a whole bunch of stuff ended up in that category. And it's free from Inf Freedom of Information Act requests. It's free from the prying eyes of the public. But and the government could... They don't care about that, right? Well, you know, it's kind of like a government industry partnership. Yeah, but like the... See, no longer is the government accountable for this. Once it goes into the private corporation, it goes from a classified program into a corporation. There's no Freedom of Information Act accountability. There's nothing. Okay. All right, and I so now saying. this has been... The, the, the whole stuff about crash uh, debris retrievals and analysis and back engineering research, that is all in compartments and stovepipes throughout a huge amount of companies that are accountable not to the public at all. And the fact that these programs even exist has been covered up at the deepest levels because these guys that started all this within government 
were accountable to nobody in the very beginning. And over time, they've been given so much money and so much black budget money and so much lack of accountability that we have no idea what's going on. And the idea that there's somebody sitting on top of all this right now that, that knows everything about everything UFO related in some secret office in the basement of the Pentagon, I used to think that that was probably true, and now I'm not so sure. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.